people's only safety net. She's a phenomenal woman. When she was in her 30s and in her 20s, she was advocating for transgender rights. And to this day, she still does that. Majors told me she really doesn't care whether you call her he or she. She's a mother, she's a father, she's a grandmother, a grandfather. She's a little bit of everything. I feel like she's like deeply genderqueer in this way. Like someone will be like, you're a woman. And she'll be like, I'm a wonder woman. I wonder what kind of woman I am. When you're around Miss Major, she will stop the whole world to look at you and to really see you. Miss Major Griffin Gracie has been a part of the LGBT movement since the 1960s. She began her journey in 1969 during the legendary Stonewall riots, which resulted in her incarceration. After learning the hardships of being a transgender woman in a male prison, she began to take a stand as a transgender advocate and a prominent idol in the LGBT community. She was born on October 25, 1940 in the south side of Chicago to a middle class family. Her father worked at the post office and her mother was a hairdresser and ran a beauty salon. By the time she came out to her parents at age 12, transgender had not yet been a word. The only thing she could tell them was that she did not feel right. Her parents took her to many psychiatrists and attended church to attempt to fix Miss Major, but it came to no prevail. Her parents eventually kicked her out of their house and Miss Major soon began a life of juvenile behavior and tough living circumstances. Griffin Gracie began living on the street and in different homeless shelters. To fully transition into a female, she paid for black market hormonal pills from a fortune teller that lived in the north side of Chicago. To gain a few dollars, Miss Major began working as a prostitute, as well as stealing and breaking safes. After being caught and incarcerated for six months, Miss Major began her journey to the gory city of New York. There, Miss Major started to feel at home and started dressing out and working as a showgirl, as well as continuing her job as a prostitute. She attempted to pursue normal jobs and attend college, but because of the way she dressed and acted, she was never accepted. Griffin Gracie later started to spend her leisure time at the Stonewall Inn. Many patrons of the inn said that it was a place that they would attend after working many hours on their street. Before the night of the Stonewall riots, the police would constantly raid the inn for little to no reason. The police in every city rules the gay community bars and stuff. They go up to there and they take those nice sticks and hit the door jam. And you're supposed to step away from a partner of the same sex if you're dancing with them. If you're at a table, you're supposed to move apart and sit and be casually talking within so many feet away from each other. On the night of June 28, 1969, Miss Major and a few of her friends were celebrating a birthday when the police once again started raiding the Stonewall Inn. Patrons of the inn began throwing objects, and when a few of the LGBT members were thrown into the police wagons, the riots grew stronger. Miss Major claimed that the riots were not planned, and that they were more of a feeling that the entire club felt. She recalled that her favorite part of the riot was when the police retreated into the club and locked the doors. They felt pride as people across the street cheered for the trans men and women fighting back. During the heat of the riot, Miss Major was knocked unconscious. The next day, she was incarcerated along with other participants. The event started Griffin Gracie's long road to trans activism and AIDS work. During her five-year prison sentence, Miss Manger was put inside the men's ward where she met Frank Big Black Smith. He would soon turn out to be one of the leaders in the Attica prison riots. He encouraged Miss Major to educate herself on African American history. She later began defending the transgender woman from the men inside of the prison and continuously landing herself in solitary confinement. Prison guards threatened the trans women and told them that they could be murdered and buried inside the prison and no one would even know. After this encounter, Ms. Major started thinking of ways to help trans women in prison so that they wouldn't have to experience the things that she went through. Upon her release in 1974, Ms. Major moved to San Diego, California in 1978 to start a new life with her son, as well as establishing her own center. In 1990, she created the Tenderloin AIDS Research Center, or the TARC, where she would work for the next 13 years. The TARC was a nonprofit organization that aimed to decrease the increase of HIV and homelessness. They provided testing, education, and connection to legal services. 
Miss Major had prior knowledge on how difficult it was to be homeless, so she assured that there was to be a refrigerator so that the homeless would have a place to store food or pills that needed to be refrigerated. She also began participating in HIV AIDS meetings and attending funerals for victims of the disease that had no one to mourn them. During the heightened period of the spread of HIV and AIDS, she had to attend two funerals a week. After leaving the TARC, she began working for the Transgender Gender Variant Intersex Justice Project, or the TGIJP, in 2003. The project focuses on providing incarcerated transgender individuals care and solace during their time in prison. They make sure that the trans women have access to some type of income upon their release. Ms. Major would visit prisons in California every two months to provide support in groups and give legal services to the prisoners. She still does so today. As a result of her service towards the transgender and HIV AIDS community, she has been awarded several awards such as the Social Justice Sabbatical Award and the Bobby Jean Baker Memorial Award, as well as a documentary about her life. Major is a documentary about the violation of rights of the LGBT communities. It focuses on Miss Major's involvement in Stonewall and her innovative ideas that help transgender individuals and people of color. The documentary was released in 2015 and has won 19 awards for Best Documentary. Because of her contributions in the cities of San Diego and San Francisco, at the age of 74, she was the Grand Marshal for the San Francisco Pride in 2014. In recent years, she is beginning to move to Arkansas in light of the new president. The result of the election has spiked violence against people of color and transgender individuals, and Miss Major feels like she is needed in the states down south. As of 2016, Miss Major has been planning her retirement from the Transgender Gender Variant Intersex Justice Project, but she still plans to be a prominent idol in the transgender community. Miss Major is still trying to help the transgender community gain more acceptance and recognition today, but her fight is still far from over. Events such as the new Stonewall movie that was released in 2015 portrays white cisgender male actors instead of transgender people of color who would accurately portray the participants of the riots. This movie erased a lot of what Stonewall was about, minority transgender individuals fighting for their freedom to express themselves, and this was a prime example of transgender erasure. Miss Major is still unhappy with how the trans community is being portrayed and she claims that some famous transgender individuals are making the community look bad. The fight for equality for people of color and transgender individuals in the prison system and in modern life is still continuing to grow stronger. Miss Major has taken a stand in both 1969 during the Stonewall riots and in modern times to stop prejudice and inequality, but we still have a long way to go. Our resilience, you know, that, you know, okay, you knock me down, B, and I'm going to get up and stop this from happening to me a second time, you know. And that with all that we've gone through, we're still there. We're still going to rise. We're still going to get up, dust ourselves off, change our outfit, and go out there again and again.